Hey, today's tip is on post processing, a very important part of photography. But all too often our post processing is empty. We're not using it to help us communicate through our photos. Instead, we follow trends, our instincts, or just accept whatever techniques are offered on popular educational websites. Tip number two today. In this video, three simple, practical steps that'll change the way you post process. Hey, I'm Mitchell. For the past decade, I've been living my dream, journeying around the world as a professional travel photographer. During this time, I've seen and I've learned a lot. And now I want to share the knowledge with you. Come along on the journey. I'm on another nice viewpoint today, as you can see. It's actually been raining on and off today, which is just fine for post-processing because you don't feel bad about being indoors and missing out on great weather. This video will help you tell your stories and convey a sense of mood and ambience through your post-processing. Just to clarify, I will be talking about post-processing of photos that are travel, documentary, or photos of everyday life. The aim here is to achieve lifelike results. First step is an obvious one. Check if the image is technically okay. Is anything obviously odd? This is when you fix stuff like lens distortion. Is the image evenly exposed? Our cameras have limitations. Sometimes we need to even out the exposure in post-processing. We are not going into techniques here, no detailed adjustments. We're building a base to work on, making the photos as good as possible technically, without the creative adjustments yet. Sometimes the exposure is impossible to even out. Our cameras cannot capture both extremes of a really wide dynamic range situation. In some cases, you have to live with the overexposed areas, unless you don't mind losing most of the detail in the dark areas, which sometimes works very well too. A real quick interjection. We're now in the middle of the seven day summer special on my travel photography course the course that I talk about in almost all of my videos. Normally a bit over $129, now just $59. There's over an hour dedicated to post-processing. And I've even included my raw files for you to follow along with what I do. You are seeing the link now and it's in the description too. Step two, post-process for the feel, mood, ambience. I like to ask myself these two questions. How did I feel at the scene? How do I want the viewer to feel? Then more practical questions come up like, should the image be warm or cold? I usually leave the white balance on auto or around 5000, 5500 Kelvin. Sometimes the white balance doesn't look obviously off, as is the case here, but it doesn't look the way I want it to either. The adjustments may be very, very subtle. But you can see it feels just a little cooler now and I want the scene to feel cool. Some scenes could work warm or cold. Nothing against experimenting or exaggerating a little if you have a reason. I want to make everything as close as possible to how I remember the scene. Here I had this wonderful warm sunset, so it's gonna be warm. Indoor scenes illuminated by natural light. I usually make them as neutral as possible. Overcast, somber days, especially with more somber themes, generally work well as neutral as possible too. Another question is, should your photo be contrasty, punchy, or soft? So many tutorials teach you how to make your photos dynamic and punchy, but it just doesn't make any sense to apply this technique to every single image. This photo, for instance, it has quite a wide range of tones. Why make it more contrasty? No reason to make it softer either. I feel it communicates what I want best when the contrast is neutral. Here is an image that I want to feel dynamic, striking. As it is now, it just doesn't have the intended impact. Here the contrast increased, more punchy. The impact is now as I intended. An example of where I wanted soft contrast. Actually, with more contrast, the scene might look more pleasing to the eye, 
But that's not the point. I want to really communicate the feeling of being in the smoke. And so with less contrast, the man just kind of fades into the smoke. And this emphasizes what it was like. There are more adjustments to make, but as a starting point, this works. Making the photo more dark or bright will impact how it feels. Here are a couple of extreme examples. Here the pilgrims were just appearing out of the darkness in this ancient rock church. The scene felt so mysterious. I really wanted to communicate that. And the image works perfectly when it's darkened. You see, if I brighten it, the mystery gets lost. Here I wanted the scene to look bleached by the sun just to emphasize the merciless landscape. So this is a case where I brightened the image quite a lot. At this stage, I am talking about the overall adjustments. If something gets too obviously bright, like here or here, just fix it right away or in the next step. There are more tweaks that you can make. You can use presets, but remember, don't just do it because everybody else is. Always ask yourself, does the preset help you communicate how you felt, how you want your audience to feel? Step number three, identify the story. Post process for the story. In practical terms, what's important and needs to stand out more? What's distracting and needs to stand out less. Depending on that, you then go on to make some very specific adjustments. This image, it's about women in a kitchen cooking, and this smoke tells a lot about what they're doing. Since the photo is partly about the women, their faces are brightened, they're made to stand out a little more. The smoke is emphasized, not too much, just to give it a bit more presence. This pot here and the fire, they're getting a little lost. So I brightened them up a tiny bit. I obsess with small details, so if I can go to before and after, you can see that I made this hand stand out really slightly too. Going back to the before image, initially these dishes, they draw slightly more attention than they should, so I darkened them. When you look at the before and after, it's not a dramatic difference. And remember, that's not the point. The point is to communicate the story effectively, even if that means that you're only being subtle. A totally different kind of photo, but the idea is the same. I wanted to emphasize this woman's wrinkles. They're part of her story. The face too. The eyes are really important. The lips and the nose stud, they should stand out a little too. Nothing was too distracting here, but I can darken this spot a tiny bit. This is the after. Very subtle. A closer look. Before and after. It's important not to overdo any of this. Some people go really crazy with the eyes and the wrinkles and do something like this. I feel that's a big no-no. Whenever you're not sure, just bring back whatever effects you made, like 50%. Those are the three steps. Now, what post-processing app do I use? I use a lot of Adobe Lightroom, but I also love Capture One. Of course, you can apply everything that I've just mentioned using any app. And if you do, you'll be creating images that don't just follow trends or look cool, there'll be photos that touch your viewers by communicating effectively. So this was tip number two. If you haven't seen number one yet, check that out. And tip number three is coming on Sunday.